Well, I think uh, the women's chorus, which was the first chorus that Sensei heard in this country, really took him by surprise. In a way, in one, in one uh, moment, he was able to appreciate the growth of NSUK since uh, 14 years previously. It was the last time he'd visited us and the last time he heard a chorus. And I think he felt, especially perhaps from the women's division, uh, uh, he felt that growth over those 14 years. So I think it was very moving. And his words, when you see them in print like this, sound so stilted. But they certainly, in the Japanese language, I believe, were not at all stilted. And indeed, the way in which Miss Yakura uh, translated them at that moment was not stilted. It's one of the things that's always difficult about translations and putting something on paper, which was said so much from the heart. So, uh, it emphasizes, I think, the incredible and wonderful thing about singing. Singing together. I remember years ago, it was very difficult to get people to sing together. In the very early days, sometimes new, new members or people joining just couldn't bear it. They felt, I don't know what they felt, naked maybe or something or other in having to stand out and sing with everyone. And we all realized at that time that to sing with other people in chorus is a part of one's human revolution, don't you think? We have all sorts of in inhibitions about it. Maybe we, vote, we only sang with others in unity during the war or when we were in the Boy Scouts or whatever. And it had a sort of, perhaps a some people think a corny ring to the whole idea. But in fact, it's the most wonderful thing. And your song this morning was another example of that. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me if I cough every so often. So, uh, I think Sensei uh, felt that, and he tried to convey that in what he said. What he was really saying was, I believe, that they, those women, when they were singing that song, felt freedom. Somehow, their spirits really soared with their song. And they felt free. And what he mentioned there was their conviction in the inviolability and imperishability of their faith and love. In other words, the faith and love arising from their Buddha states as they sang that song burst through all the barriers, all the inhibitions, all the fears, and was free. I can feel that, and I guess those of you who enjoy singing with your whole hearts can feel that too. So it, is, it brings to light, and what he was getting at was, what is true freedom, I feel? True freedom, which is freedom certainly from fear. In that moment of great strength, singing in that chorus, those women knew that what was most precious in their lives could never be taken away. Of course, they were working it out in their heads like that. But that's what I feel they felt inside themselves. Freedom from fear is one thing, isn't it? The other is freedom from the, the chains or the shackles of one's selfish uh, desires. Those desires which uh, fetter us, which in our hearts we would love to be free of, yet time to time they gnaw at us. Other things like petty jealousies and envies, narrow, miserable, selfish outlook on life, which exists in every human being. But in those moments, they, they knew they could be free of that. 
I think we can all experience that feeling too. And indeed we can be free of it, because that is what the whole purpose of this practice is. Nothing else than being free, free of the chains of one's desires and one's fears, which are one's unhappy karma. Freedom in the knowledge that that strength which you feel at those moments can, cannot be taken away by anybody. Absolutely no one. So I feel, you know, that is really true freedom, isn't it? And it's what we're working for, what we're chanting for. In the Gosho, uh, uh, Nichiren Daishonin described it as being like uh, the difference between a bird in a cage and the wild birds that surround it, uh, singing and soaring in the heavens above the cage. And the bird in the cage, which is our Buddhahood, hears the cries of those other birds and makes one huge effort to squeeze through the bars and get away and succeed. The struggle of the human revolution to release that Buddha state so that it can be free, free of the chains of the desires and the narrow outlook of our selfish ego which absolutely cage it in. Don't you think? If you want to read that go so, it's volume 5, page 112 and 113, about the bird in the cage. It's called A Sage and an Unenlightened Man. But it's our egos which create the cage. And the whole purpose of this practice is to break through it. So I feel the experience of it, of breaking through it, even though it may only be for a moment, singing a song is very important. But of course, also more important still is that a person listening to that chorus, listening to the song, also feels something as well, don't they? In that, in that instant, too, the chorus is the wild bird singing freely. And the people who are listening, there may be some who are free like that and can join in it freely, but there may be others who are not yet free and who can feel something glorious about what those, about the way in which those women or men or whoever are performing. And this takes them another step towards finding out about this Buddhism. What is it that these people have got to sing so gloriously together. So no doubt, singing is very important. And we're very fortunate, I think, as a, as a, as a nation or race, uh, because singing is something that comes easily to us. We sing at a drop of a hat, don't we? Singing in the bath, singing in the loo, singing on the march very easy for us to sing, whether we've got a good voice or not, ever so often we let go. Gicho Yamazaki uh, was saying, when he heard the chorus again on the video, he said, you know, this is a good fortune of, of, of the UK, that you can sing so marvelously, because in France they can't sing so easily. Not so easily as we can. They can do other things better than us, though, including cooking. <laughs> so we were talking earlier about the choirs. The men's division choir was also fantastic. That feeling of freedom when they sang. When you all sang, men of oak, you feel some incredible feeling of freedom. One of the things you require and request every day in the second prayer of Gonya you revere or praise the Buddha of absolute freedom. 
That is for us. We can be Buddhas of absolute freedom. Oh my goodness, let's go for it. Don't let's gloss it by as being something for someone else. Whatever one's life was like in the past, whatever mistakes and things we feel were miserable that we did, it doesn't matter, that's past. We practice this amazing Buddhism of Hanin Myo. The Buddha or the Buddhism of the true cause. Not living on the effects of the past, that's Hongamyo. We practice Hanin Myo. We make the causes now and tomorrow and the next day to reveal our Buddhahood. And through that, of course, give ourselves incredible happiness, but also give many others happiness too.